goodness and beauty from the heart. The church continues to remind us of the virtues and qualities that should characterize our lives as Christians. Maybe asking without doubt that we are Christians, but then we ask, how qualitative is my Christian life? If the good was to be measured through percentages of depth of faith and belief, how deep would mine be? The church reminds us that while physical appearance could be deceptive, what really determines who we are is what comes from within. This includes the quality of our words, the wisdom, and the goodness that we manifest. The quality of our words, the wisdom, and the goodness that we manifest. So, our first reading today is a call to be very careful in evaluating people based on their appearances rather than on the wisdom that comes from them. And this is what we have heard. The test of a man is in his conversation. A man's word betrays what he feels. Do not praise him before he speaks. Now, that is epic. Do not praise him before he speaks. Why? Because from the outside, we may just be good fellows. But then, that which is coming from within us becomes what we would call a toxic content that datifies, if you like, whatever it is that is observable. In spite of this, it suffices to add that one needs a lot of wisdom to discern the truth again in someone's words. Great and deep wisdom. Discernment is the process guided by the Spirit of God of knowing the authenticity of people, their intentionalities and their words. And many a times we hear, here we fail and fall miserably. Why? Because we have got an innate drive, if not inclination, to trust people based on the small thing that we heard or saw. Christ says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Matthew chapter 15, verse, five, verse 8. At the times, they also tell us what we want to hear just to make us happy for a moment, and uh, we become sad afterwards. For many, many years, I have been listening to people, and um, I have had clients who just come and say what they want you to hear, not the truth. And maybe it, it, it's a family problem, and uh, somebody would, would tell you uh, that, uh, no, ma, uh, this person, this person is very calculative and very cunning. This person only says what he would want you to hear, not the truth. And there are people, by the way, who are beyond help. Not because that uh, spiritually they cannot be redeemed, but there are people who are just deceptive enough to the extent that you would want to help them. But the, the, their hearts are not teachable and they are not open to any counsel because they want to put on a facade and lie to you uh, what maybe you would want to hear. Maybe you want to tell them, stop this, stop this. But then they do not want. You see, the wisdom, good counsel, and sincerity that comes from the word of a Christian is what 
set that person apart. Biblically, we are told, it would make that person a man in whom there is no guile or deceit. If you like, read John chapter 1, verse 47. Not only our words, but our actions as Christians must edify, improve, and encourage others. Some of us, our actions have made people to stop going to church. Some of us, our words have made people to stop going to church. Maybe even in your choir groups. Maybe there are some people who stopped coming from maybe because somebody was not kind enough in their, in their actions. 